Hey everyone, this is Curve, and I bring you another standard match. Today we have myself on the right playing Avangarda as everyone requested, and on the left we do have Bastion. So, we're gonna see Bastion actually discarding Spiral Cutie Angel, but opting not to use the skill. Uh, probably just hoping to use that Marin skill in order to call the Wingle Brave out, because if you do actually Soul Blast it for the Spiral Cutie, then obviously if you whiff off the top, you don't really get anything. So anyways, I'm just going to be riding into my grade 1, hitting into a defensive trigger there. Um, a little bit unfortunate, but really it doesn't matter. Uh, what trigger out is a trigger out, as we are going to be seeing the ride into Blaster Blade, uh, checking the top 5. Probably not going to see anything. I don't even think we play any targets in the deck. So we're just playing this basically just to call out the Wingle, which is definitely a viable play because we do actually get a lot of uh, pressure from that. Even having a 5k booster of Vanguard in this early in the game is very good. As we do see the Spiral Cutie actually activated this time, swinging the Vanguard for 16, hitting to a front trigger. Obviously, I'm not going to be guarding that because um, that is a 15 one to pass, and I am not about that life. Anyways, riding into my grade 2, I do get to search out the grade 1 order and add it to my hand. So, uh, another good thing about Avangard is just your ability to kind of just deck thin and your ability to draw so many cards throughout the course of the match as we are seeing here with the habitable zone a uh, card that you can't use on your first turn but once you do ride up to grade two you are totally free to use it because you do need to keep that sora period in the soul in order to actually use any of your skills so we see me calling out uh this is a little bit of a tech that um i put in i have two of these in the deck almost forgetting to play my uh, order for the turn um, unfortunately hitting into a defensive heal trigger there so my opponent is gonna be healing down to one so effectively even though I called a full rush board I did zero damage with that as I don't even hit an offensive trigger so we right into bastion here using the skill of the spiral cutie once again to soul blast out the blast plate and draw another card so at this instance we are kind of just out of soul but bastion is not really a deck that needs soul um, and we see uh, two of the new grade three double rare from set 12 coming down here. And I, in this instance, don't realize how much in danger I am actually. Um, these things are actual menaces. They are 28k on both players' turns. And they have resist. So there's basically no way to get rid of these. As first one's going to be swinging with the boost it is going to be going up to 36 against my 10k vanguard um i don't really have a good way to guard that um even that front trigger is going to mean that i need another 10k um meaning i'm going to be over guarding just a little bit i'm going to be taking this vanguard swing as he as my opponent hits into a heal trigger healing down to zero and then hitting another heal trigger giving another 10k to the unit that is going to be restanding with bastion skill now, Bastion is a deck that actually does not really need much CB outside of using the Drive Track and some other skills like that Angel we're seeing. Um, so, swinging for 38 and 38 again, thanks to the fact that I hit double defensive triggers, I am going to actually be able to block this with just a double intercept. But that being said, uh, the damage score is 3 to 0, so things are really not looking good for me right now as I do use my Habitable Zone and then proccing the skill of the Grade 2 in order to search out that Grade 2 order. Uh, the, let's see, I actually got a copy of It's called Dusting, the Bomber Strategy Dusting. Um, adding it to the hand. And then, of course, we are going to be using the Habitable Zone's skill in order to put it on the bottom of the deck, Soul Blasting the one, and then, of course, drawing the card to go refund our skill. So, thus far, we haven't really lost a whole bunch of advantage using the avant-garde skill, putting the dusting into the soul, giving it an extra 10k, and then of course the skill gives it another 5k, calling out the lady, the new promo, and using her skill, since I did put a card from order to soul, soul blasting one, and then adding death winds from my deck to my hand. So I've got a decent setup. Unfortunately, I don't think I have another good rear guard. Using that double intercept means that I don't really have good options right now, so I'm going to have to bank on trying to hit here i think that there's a decent amount of pressure because if my opponent wants a one damage you have to take this if they take it that means that they risk the chance of actually um you know 
letting me restand. Uh, so I do see a Hathaway there, which is pretty good. Hitting into a front trigger, swinging at 25. Uh, unfortunately, this is where I realized both of these rear guards are static at 28, meaning that this unit is not going to be hitting. And I figure I might as well just leave my opponent at zero. Um, it means that I don't have to worry about drive checks. It means I don't have to worry about that angel skill proccing. So definitely, I am in a very, very bad situation here because even with zero CV, we are still swinging for 28, which is a super magic number. Thankfully, I have fronts to help mitigate it a little bit. But at the same time, um, I'm going to be taking this Vanguard swing just because that is just a little bit too much pressure as I thankfully hit into a defensive, meaning that these other swings are going to hurt a little bit less, but they are still 10k guards as uh, this other one is actually still 15, which I'm going to go ahead and commit. And he did take out my rear guard with that other swing. So I am definitely very much struggling here to try and kind of come back into the game, um, starting off with a Persona Ride and then the Hathaway that I was missing a couple of turns ago. Playing the Death Winds and then putting it into the Soul in order to draw the card. So, um, gonna try and stabilize here, but at the same time, the damage is 4 to 0. So, really, realistically, I'm really fighting a uphill battle here. Uh, so, my chances of being able to actually come back into this game are very, very low. I have no way to actually get rid of those Grade 3 Rear Guards. So, um, they are going to be a nuisance every single turn. And I don't think I have very many turns left in me as I do swing and smack my opponent. Um, actually, finally getting that one damage to stick. Um, of course, it does. Letting it hit doesn't really matter that much because obviously I was going to restand anyway. As I swing yet again for a much bigger number of 48. If I had been able to keep that rear guard, I would have had at least a little bit of a better offense. But unfortunately, I didn't as I drive track into nothing. And then my opponent is going to go, finally go to two. So this is going to be a 40k attack. I'm debating whether I actually want to commit this to one of the rear guards. Um, I could, but that is honestly just a 20k guard. As we see like a front trigger right there. That would have guarded it anyway. So I figure I might as well put some more pressure on the Vanguard. Because eventually I do need to get up to the same. I do need to, if I have, want to have any chance of winning this, I do need to make sure my opponent is as high as possible in their damage. So that I can actually... Uh, realistically kill unfortunately my opponent is gonna be starting off with a persona I mean that those are 38k bases um, which are swinging twice and then they sweet call another angel as they swing this first one for 46 checking the top two cards of the deck we can definitely see a critical trigger there one unit going to the bottom of the deck and then the other is gonna stay on top so that's very worrying for me it kind of just like signals that there's a trigger there so i'm going to try and bank on a defensive but unfortunately my luck has finally run out as i can't get a defensive to save me um, in this final turn um, i am going to be pg'ing the vanguard because i'm pretty sure there is a trigger on top um, as we do see it, the critical trigger there, giving the power and the uh, critical to that other one. And then the second check, unfortunately for me, is also another critical trigger. Although it doesn't really matter um, because I don't think I have enough to guard both of these attacks. Especially with this attack swinging in for 58 and with two drive checks. So I'm looking at my hand. I think I drew into OT. But unfortunately, these swings are getting so big that we're even creeping into uh, OT power levels um as i'm going to kind of decide calculating um asking for the numbers seeing how much everything is if i even have enough to guard and i think that i have just enough to guard if i do not if my opponent does not see a single trigger on these next two drive checks um, i'm gonna be guarding for 78 which i believe should be a two to pass but uh, i think we did the math wrong a little bit um I technically did have enough to live if I had guarded differently, but it doesn't really matter. Even if I had been able to live that turn, um, there was no way I could win from that position. But I hope you guys did enjoy this short list one. Not a great showing for Advent Garda, but that's what the other videos are for. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to do all these things. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.